In 1937, the company Saab was formed in Sweden. This was the first real aircraft industry in the country. The first aircraft Saab produced was the dive bomber Saab 17, designated the B-17. While the B-17 was being constructed, the Swedish Air Force also bought aircraft from the UK, the US, Germany and Italy. Because of the increasing tension in the world in the 1930s, the Air Force was reorganized and expanded. However, when war broke out in 1939, only 180 aircraft were available. When the Finnish Winter War broke out in November 1939, Sweden, despite the lack of own aircraft, decided to send three J-6 fighters, three S-6 Fokker CVE reconnaissance aircraft and two J-7 Bristol Bulldog fighters to strengthen the Finnish Air Force. In December, a volunteer Swedish squadron to help the Finns was formed. The Swedish government decided to send five B-4 Hawker Hart bombers and 12 J-8 Gloucester Gladiator fighters to assist Finland. This was a third of the Swedish Air Force fighter aircraft strength at the time. When the squadron finished its service, it had lost six aircraft, and three pilots had been killed. Twelve Soviet aircraft had been destroyed. In April 1940, Germany invaded Norway and Denmark. It seemed likely that Sweden was the next target. When Sweden initially refused to let German troops be transported through the country, German military action was expected. While the attack never came, the development of the Swedish Air Force was intensified to at least reach an acceptable level. On April 11th, the rules of engagement for Swedish anti-aircraft batteries was changed. They were instructed to open fire without first firing any warning shots. The Air Force was instructed to avoid flying close to German naval forces. To strengthen the Air Force capacity, Sweden ordered 120 Seversky P-35 and 144 P-66 Vanguard aircraft from the United States. But after the invasion of Denmark and Norway, the US declared an embargo against exporting weapons to any nation other than Great Britain. Only about 10 Seversky P-35, designated J-9, were delivered in the autumn of 1940. Instead, the Air Force managed to get hold of a number of Fiat CR-42, designated J-11. The first batch of J-11s had been ordered by the Finnish Air Force, but failed to be delivered in time for the Soviet invasion. An additional 60 J-11s were ordered. In Malmo, in the south of Sweden, a new fighter wing was formed. The new fighter wing was supposed to be equipped with the ordered Vanguard fighters, but when they were not delivered, it had to make do with an insufficient number of older J-8 Gloucester gladiators. The war in Europe also stopped deliveries of Dutch Fokker GR1s, as well as deliveries of aircraft ordered from France and Germany. The Swedish Air Force had to make do with what was available. The Italian Caproni CA-313 was ordered as a bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. They were delivered without engines, so they had to be fitted with engines in Sweden. The Caproni became very controversial in Sweden, since it was involved in a large number of crashes. The crashes were due to faulty construction, as well as misuse of the aircraft and problems with the engines. Another reason was poor quality fuel. The Air Force also bought Regian RE-2000 fighters from Italy. This was an aircraft that the Italian Air Force did not want, but it was not a bad aircraft. It was designated the J-20 in the Swedish Air Force. The J-20 was deployed to F-10, the new air wing formed in Malmo. It would make a huge contribution to guarding the Swedish neutrality during the war. The Swedish government was worried about two different scenarios in 1940. The first case was being attacked by Germany from the south, and the second case was being attacked by the Soviet Union from the north. Planning was made based on these two scenarios. When Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union, was launched in June 1941, Germany demanded to be allowed to transfer troops from Norway to Finland, through Sweden. The Swedish government approved this, after realizing that the alternative was that the Germans would otherwise send a division of troops through Sweden even if they were not allowed. The Swedish defense forces were not strong enough to withstand such a threat. In December 1941, the Swedish Air Force was reported to have first-class manpower, with good training. However the aircrafts used were not modern enough and performed poorly. In 1941, the Air Force was growing. About 300 aircraft were available, and although efforts were made to guard the Swedish neutrality, there was not much power available to meet the threats. In February 1942, German troop concentrations along the Norwegian border worried the Swedish Central Command. The Air Force was put on high alert, but the concerns proved unfounded. In March 1942, the delayed first deliveries of the Swedish-built bomber and reconnaissance aircraft SOP-17 were made. 
During 1942, the capacity of the Swedish Air Force for the first time reached the strength to be able to effectively defend the country against any enemy. When the aircraft ordered from abroad could not be delivered, the decision was made to develop and produce a Swedish fighter aircraft. The result of this was the FFBS J-22, that proved to be an excellent fighter aircraft. The first deliveries were made in October 1943. At the same time, the development of the war in Europe decreased the threat against Sweden. In 1943, the Saab 21 flew for the first time, although it would not enter service until 1946 when the war was over. During 1944, the pressure against Sweden increased again. Several reconnaissance aircraft disappeared over the Baltic. More Allied and German aircraft entered Swedish airspace in the south of Sweden. In 1944 and 1945, some days up to 20 Allied aircraft would make emergency landings at F-10 in Malmö. This was usually planes that had been damaged during raids over Germany. In total, almost 350 aircraft landed in Sweden during the war. In March 1944, deliveries were made of the new Swedish Saab 18 bomber. This was a medium bomber, built to replace the obsolete B-3 Junkers Ju-86 bombers. In the final year of the war, Sweden tested different US fighters on American bases in the UK. The Swedish Air Force was given a good deal on the P-47 Thunderbolt, but eventually decided on buying the P-51 Mustang. When the war ended, the Swedish Air Force had more than 800 combat-ready aircraft, including 15 fighter squadrons. In the following years the Swedish Air Force would continue to grow, and during the 1950s it was considered the fourth most powerful air force in the world. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel.